Terrifying moments at a Trump rally in Pennsylvania Saturday as the nation reacts to an apparent assassination attempt in the midst of this very contentious election year. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Dan Spieler. We'll get reaction from elected officials in Indiana coming up. But we start with Vinay Simlot from our Washington Bureau. A searing moment Saturday afternoon, former President Donald Trump rushed away from a rally after the sound of gunshots rang out. Said, Take a look at what happened. Oh. <laughs> former President Trump grabbed his face and ducked, Secret Service rushing to the stage to protect him. Wait, wait, wait. As they lift him up, a fist pump from the former president. Photos show what appears to be blood on his face. His spokesperson says President Trump is fine and being checked out at a local medical facility. The Secret Service adds the former president is safe. The White House says President Biden received a briefing on the incident. In a statement, President Biden says he's grateful former President Trump is safe and is praying for him, his family and those at the rally. As the investigation begins, well wishes are pouring in from both parties. In Washington, I'm Vinay Simlot. Now, in a statement Saturday night, the former president said he was grazed in the ear and said he immediately knew something was wrong. He said, quote, I heard a whizzing sound shots and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Now, a campaign spokesperson, as you heard there, said he's fine and being checked out at a local medical facility. Saturday night, President Biden spoke to the nation just hours after that incident in Pennsylvania. I've been thoroughly briefed by all the agencies of the federal government as to the situation based on what we know now. I have tried to get a hold of Donald. Uh, he's with his doctors. Uh, they, apparently, he's doing well. I plan on talking to them shortly, I hope, when I get back to the uh, telephone. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. And so and I want to thank the Secret Service and all the agencies, including the state agencies, that have been engaged in making sure that people who, and we have more detail to come relative to other injured, other people maybe injured in the audience. I don't have all that detail. We'll make that available to you. I may be able to come back a little later tonight, but we'll put out a statement if we don't. If I'm not able to get, for, if it's not convenient for you all. But the bottom line is that the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. I mean, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. I'll keep you informed, and if I'm able to speak to, the, to Donald, I'll, I'll let you know that as well. So far, it appears he's doing well, number one. Number two, that they're thoroughly investigating what happened to anyone else in the audience. I have, we have some reports, but not final reports. And every agency in the federal government, I'll be, and I'm going back to, to my phone to speak with the federal agencies that are being put together again to give me an updated briefing. Does anything happen? They learned any more in the last couple hours. So thank you very much, and I hope I get to speak to him tonight, and I'll get you back to you if I do. Okay? Mr. President, do you think this was an assassination attempt? I don't know enough. To, I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some comment, any more comments. Thank you. Meantime, on social media, former Vice President Mike Pence said Karen and I are praying for President Trump and urge every American to join us. Of course, at next week's convention, Donald Trump set to name his new running mate for 2024. More reaction here from Senator Todd Young, who said it was a terrifying scene at President Trump's event and that he's praying that he and all in attendance are OK and that calm will prevail. Senator Young saying violence is never the answer. Congressman Rudy Yakum said political violence is never acceptable. He says he was sick to his stomach over the assassination attempt of President Trump and hopes that all Hoosiers join him in praying for the former president's safety. Congressman Andre Carson said political violence is never the answer. I'm glad to hear 
Former President Trump appears to be doing well. He says we cannot let this incite violence on any side, and that he's thankful for law enforcement's quick response and praying for everyone impacted. Now, this event happened during Saturday's state convention for Indiana Democrats. We got reaction there to Saturday's breaking news in Pennsylvania. There is no room for political violence. There's no room for violence in political discourse on any side. So, you know, it's unfortunate it happened. We'll wait to see the details and we'll go from there. I couldn't believe it. I mean, that, that is a huge historical event. I completely condone violence in any way toward any type of a candidate, no matter their party. And I hope that we can get down to the bottom of it. I just condemn all violence in politics and public service. There's absolutely no place for that. Um, in our country, nor there ever should be. Um, it's scary. Unfortunately, we've heard that other people were injured, and that's a very sad statement. And violence, we, that's been our point as, as Democrats, to do something about the gun violence, to have reasonable rules. I was Senate candidate Valerie McRae were there, who's going to be running against Jim Banks. Now, at the convention Saturday, Terry Gooden was officially nominated as Jennifer McCormick's running mate and the party's candidate for lieutenant governor, while Destiny Wells, who you just heard from, picked up the nomination for attorney general to go up against Todd Rokita in the fall. Now, Democratic delegates here in Indiana also talked about the ongoing situation with President Biden's campaign after his news conference at the NATO summit on Thursday. So much discussion that was happening about that throughout the weekend right up until the events of Saturday afternoon and just ahead of next week's Republican National Convention. Jesse Turnour has a recap of the president's press conference at the NATO summit in Washington. The president spoke with reporters for about an hour, insisting he's not leaving the race, despite growing calls from Democrats to do so. And the best qualified to win. In his first solo press conference of the year, President Joe Biden shut down growing calls from fellow Democrats to end his reelection bid. I've got to finish this job because there's so much at stake. But the president fielded question after question about his ability to do that. We're organized. We're moving. President Biden used the majority of the press conference on the last day of the NATO summit to tout his foreign policy acumen and accomplishments at home. Just this morning. We had a great economic report showing inflation is down. But the president made a few slip ups. When referring to Vice President Kamala Harris, he mistakenly called her by another name. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. And during the NATO summit, President Biden mixed up the names of two world leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> president Putin. You can beat President Putin. President Zelensky. Some Democrats praised the president's performance, including North Carolina Congressman Wiley Nickel. I'm hoping that, that he put most of those questions to bed tonight and we can start talking about the issues. But a growing number of congressional Democrats, including New York Congressman Pat Ryan, are calling on President Biden to drop out of the race, arguing this election is all about beating former President Donald Trump. Joe Biden, as much as I respect and appreciate him, is not the strongest candidate to do that right now. The president, though, continues to deny polling that shows he does not have a path to victory against Trump. In Washington, I'm Jesse Chenor. Now, in a statement on Monday, Indiana Congressman Andre Carson said he joined his Democratic colleagues on a call last weekend with the president that his position remained unchanged. That President Biden's first term, he felt, has led to monumental economic growth and recovery with record-breaking investments in the middle class. He said, quote, I support our president and urge our party to get back to our shared goal of defeating Donald Trump. We mentioned Congressman Carson's statement on the incident at the Trump rally Saturday earlier as well. Of course, that shaking up uh, the news here this weekend. And up next, we're going to be talking with our panel to get their reaction to this weekend's startling events in Pennsylvania and what it means now. Plus, we're looking at some new numbers on housing affordability in our state and hearing what State Senator J.D. Ford and Senator Todd Young are saying about that important issue as well.